Hi, my name is Sarah Bannon. I am the head of literature with the Arts Council in Corla Aline, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the awards and opportunities that we have available to um, writers and illustrators in literature. And specifically, I'm going to talk about the ones that are available um, this year, towards the end of this year. So just bear with me for a second. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to begin. So uh, I'm going to talk to you about the Arts Council's awards and opportunities in literature. Um, so you might know already, but just the Arts Council is a national development agency for the arts in Ireland. Um, we come under the auspices of the Department of Arts, Heritage and a million other things uh, at the moment, but our minister is Catherine Martin, but we work at an arm's length from the department. Um, and we're guided by a 10 year strategy, which is called Making Great Art Work. And at the heart of the strategy is a vision for the arts in Ireland that is grounded in a sense of people and place where the arts are truly valued as a vital feature of our daily lives and where ambitious and innovative artists are supported to make work of excellence. Um, so what does that mean in literature? Um, well, it means that we support a range of publishers and journals. Um, we see those as being a critical outlet of support for writers at all stages of their careers. All the publishers and journals that we support are listed on our website. Um, we've supported a range of newer journals um, and publishers through um, project funding, and which I'll talk about in a little bit, and arts grant funding, and those that we consider absolutely core um, to the infrastructure are funded in strategic, uh, strategic funding. And um, so those are all listed on our website, and you can take a look and we contact details for all of those. But from our perspective, the role that the publisher and the journal play in, in a writer's life um, can't be overstated how important it is. Um, so we support them to platform those, those voices that are distinctively Irish, um, that, are, that are risky in some way that the market might not support. And that uh, I'll talk a little bit about children's literature in, in a little bit, but it's a really important part of our support in literature. Um, we also support a range of festivals and events, and we do that through strategic funding, through arts grant funding, and another scheme called festivals and events. So likely, uh, the likelihood is if you've been invited to a festival, an event, a literary festival, an event, or a multidisciplinary uh, festival event throughout the country, the Arts Council has probably supported it in some way or another, um, maybe in a small way for an element of the program, or maybe we're, we're offering core funding to them. But the reason we do that is we think it animates places. We think it's a great way to support artists, um, to get money into their pockets, but also to get their work reaching audiences in different places. And I think, you know, we're really, really, really lucky in Ireland for the, the number and range of literary festivals that we have throughout the country. Um, and then we also support a range of resource organizations like the lovely Children's Book Ireland, who are hosting us here today, um, Poetry Ireland, the Irish Writers Centre, Munster Literature Centre, Literature Ireland, which is um, uh, the organization charged with the promotion of Irish literature abroad, and they do that mainly through facility, facilitating translation grants of, um, of Irish work into, into other languages. Uh, and then Words Ireland, which isn't really an organization, but is a network of all the organizations above and also Publishing Ireland and the Singing Fly. Um, and just, it's worth just noting all these organizations because they're, um, they're, they're useful to know, but I'm sure if you're at a coffee morning like this, you know all about them already. Um, and then we support a range of initiatives. There's lovely PJ Lynch, who was um, our third laureate Minogue, fourth, fourth laureate Minogue, excuse me. Um, and Laureate Minogue was an initiative of the Arts Council, which came out of our children's literature policy and strategy, which we adopted way back in 2009. Um, and it was developed to recognize the critical role of children's literature in our, in our cultural life. Um, it prioritized support for children's writers and picture book illustrators. It prioritized support for children's publishing. We supported newer publishers um, in children's literature on foot of that, uh, places like Futapata or Little Island. And we also developed Florent Nino with our wonderful partners, uh, Children's Book Ireland. So um, just to cut to the chase now, I just, the reason I do that preamble is just to remind people that, you know, we have the, the supports that are, that are available that are direct funding to, to, um, to individual artists, but also we hope that artists um, feel the Arts Council support in other ways and more indirect ways. And just to remind people that, um, that we're trying to, to make that support felt in lots of different ways. But anyway, I'm gonna to talk to you about the range of awards that we have available. Um, so before you apply for any of our awards, uh, we try to make things as easy as possible and we are here for you. All of our details are on the website. You can contact us at any time, but a little bit of advice is to read the guidelines, start early, um, most of our application windows open about six weeks or a month ahead of time, but it has the closing date. Um, apply early, and then finally just remind you to read the guidelines. All the, all the answers to your questions are, are in the guidelines for the awards. So I'm going to talk to you about the Literature Bursary Award really quickly. 
So you, you might be familiar with this already. We've been running a literature bursary award since I feel like the dawn of time, but um, really since the Arts Council was established, um, there are two closing dates per year, but the next closing date, uh, which might be of interest, is on the 24th of June. Um, and it's open to writers and illustrators, and it's very, very simple. It is just about buying time. Um, and you can apply for one of three amounts. You can apply for 10,000 euro, 15,000 euro, or 20,000 euro. And you're to apply according to the length of time and the scale of the project. It isn't related necessarily to your stage of career, although typically I will say writers and illustrators who are more established tend to get or uh, tend to apply for larger awards and receive larger awards. But really, it is up to the artist, and we're putting faith in the artist to apply for the amount that they need. Um, so you can apply for just one of those three amounts. And we've just introduced this to try to take some of the guesswork out for, um, for individual writers and illustrators about how much they should be applying for because. Um, we don't need to know the kind of the, the minutia of your, your spending or your um, of your personal life about your mortgage details or your rent or anything like that. This is really a grant to to an artist for their ideas and to support them in their creative process. So we say to apply for one of these three amounts. Um, there's an application form which you can look at at the, at the uh, on the website, um, and then we ask you to submit um, a range of supporting material. And again, this is all detailed in the guidelines. There's a completed application form, and then there's a work in progress. And again, in the guidelines, you'll see um, specific requests for whatever kind of uh, writing you're doing. So if you're a picture book illustrator, there are um, there are guidelines for what you should submit. In, in that case, if you're writing prose fiction, there are guidelines for that. If you're writing poetry, there are guidelines for that. So that's all within the guidelines, but there's a work in progress. And that work in progress should be related to the, the, the time that you want to take. So if I'm working on a novel for middle grade, the uh, middle grade readers, or when I say that in my application, the work in progress should be from that particular piece. Um, you also put in your, your CV, um, and we also ask you to put in a one page kind of synopsis or summary of the writing project. And that's really just for the, um, for the assessors and for the panel to get a sense of where they are in the in the writing project, but just to give a sense of where your thing is. But we recognize it's a work in progress, um, but it's a really really important part of the uh, part of the assessment. Um, so we have we have an assessment process. The time frame that it takes to assess the applications really depends on the number of applications that we receive. So, in the last round for the English language literature bursary, we received around two hundred applications, um, and so it took us. Um, I think it took us about 14 weeks from closing date to issuing the decisions to get everything out. In the English language or the Irish language uh, bursaries, we received, I think, around 12 applications. So we were able to turn those around much quicker, like within a month. Um, so the way the process works is there's a shortlisting process by the advisors. Um, so uh, we have two advisors in literature. Um, Declan Hughes is the English language literature advisor, and Peter Sir is the Irish language literature advisor. In the case of English language, Declan works with um, subcontractors, um, so people who have expertise in like other areas, but also to deal, deal with the kind of high volume of applications that receive. So he usually engages someone who, who's looking at children's and YA. He usually engages someone who is um, very familiar with, with poetry, uh, and they divide up the applications that way. They make a they make a shortlisting comment against the criteria for the award, which I'll get to in a second, um, and they decide to shortlist or not shortlist. Um, in the last round, they've shortlisted uh, around half of the applications. Um, and then once the shortlist is established, we put together a peer panel. And that's made up of the peers. Um, so it's made up of people who are practicing in practicing in the field of literature. So for the literature bursary panel, we usually try to have a prose fiction writer, a children's writer, poet, and then someone who is maybe like an editor or has a kind of a broader um, since um, a library, someone who has kind of a, um, an overview of the entire sector. Um, and one of those four people we try to have um, as an international person, so someone who isn't based in Ireland. The panels are different every single round, so we refresh that and we draw them all from a, kind of a pre-approved panel list, which is available on our website, which you can take a look at. And we refresh that list from, from time to time. We get nominations from resource organizations like Children's Books Ireland from artists themselves and from the staff to suggest people to go onto that list. So we try to freshen it up every time so that you feel as an applicant that your application isn't being looked at by the same people every single time. Um, and so the panel meets, they look at all the shortlisted applications, um, they get a summary of the application, they get the works in progress, they see everything. 
And then we have a meeting, it used to be in person, now we do it on Zoom, and they talk through each application and then they give everything a score. Um, and the scores are A, B, C, and D. A is most fun, B is should fun, C is could fun, and D is not a priority. Each of those letters has a numerical value attached to it. Um, each person gives a score. We then tabulate which applications receive the highest scores. We have an available budget, and then we award funding based on how much budget we have available. A question that comes up a lot is, if I apply for 20,000, would the panel maybe consider giving me 10 if they liked the application but didn't love it? The policy in the Arts Council is to award people what they have asked for unless there is a absolutely compelling reason why they shouldn't be awarded that, i.e. they applied for something that is outside of the scope of the award. Um, so, so, so no is really the answer. So we kind of look at the budget really in, independently. So you should apply for what it is that you think that you need. Um, so the criteria for the award, as I mentioned, are artistic merit, and that's de uh, demonstrated by your track record, but also by um, the work in progress that you have submitted, um, how you meet the objectives and priorities of the award, the diversity, almost everybody meets those, um, and feasibility, whether or not we think you can pull this off. So for both the initial shortlisting assessment and the panel, these are the criteria that they're using. And I will say artistic merit is in general what, the, what they're concentrating on. And we try very hard to encourage the panel to think about people kind of in the round and not think of it as a, you know, a work in progress competition, so a 10 page writing competition, but really to think about um, the track record of the person plus the writing sample that they submitted. But I will say, um, the panels tend to really seize on the writing sample that is submitted or the illustration sample. So um, I would appeal to you as applicants to really try to make sure what you're submitting is your strongest, strongest work, because that's really where a lot of their uh, focus goes. So that's the bursary. And the next thing I want to talk to you about are the Literature Project Awards. There's going to be a closing date again in, um, on the 19th of August, and it's going to be for projects um, that happen in 2022. We only introduced this last year. We ran this years and years ago, um, but because of the pandemic, um, we received additional funding from, from the department um, halfway through the year. And we wanted to make sure that that got into the hands of artists and, and creative people to, 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 to make new things happen. So we ran projects and commissions in every single art form in the Arts Council. And so um, this was quite successful last year. We got a lot of really, really interesting applications. Um, it's open to both individuals and organizations, although I think in general we got more applications from individuals. Um, and it's really about promoting innovation, collaboration, and or connection with audiences. So if you're applying as an individual, it might be for you working on a collaboration with someone. It might be um, for you uh, making a new piece of work with another artist in another discipline. It might be to develop a podcast. It might be to um, develop a new journal, anything like that. Um, so we support projects that connect literature with readers and audiences or we're supporting projects that allow writers and illustrators to research, develop, and create work in new and innovative ways. So I suppose it's a little bit distinct from the bursary in that respect in that it's about that newness, innovation, and collaboration. So it doesn't need to do both of those things, but it could do one or the other, um, and some of them do both. Um, and so people can apply for up to 30,000 euro for this award. Um, and uh, last year it was 20,000, so we raised the ceiling just to enable a bit more ambition. Um, so for this one, the, the material is a little bit different. Um, you're putting in an application form, the CV of anyone who's involved, a detailed budget, whereas with the bursary, the budget doesn't really matter so much. Um, certainly with the project, it does, because you're probably going to be creating something. Um, and so we need to kind of see how artists are being paid, how materials are being paid, how audience is going to be engaged. Samples of previous work, not necessarily a work in progress, but samples that give us a sense of um, the artistic quality of the people involved. Um, and this a dissemination plan, how you're going to reach your audiences. If that's relevant, it might not have an audience component. And memorandums of understanding, if relevant. So if you're working with other organizations, those are included as well. Again, all of this is in the guidelines. Um, so the criteria are the same. Artistic merit, how they meet the objectives and priorities of the award, and feasibility. So they're going to be assessed in the, in the same way as the bursary. Um, so these are these are usually the criteria that we use across across all of the awards for individuals. Um, and the and the process for assessing these is, is the same as the bursary. So there's a shortlisting process that we do internally, and then we put together a peer panel. The makeup of the panel will be different, and we'll try to like um, I try to put together the panels based on 
what applications we have in front of us. So if there's like lots of collaborations with visual arts, I'll try to have someone who has that kind of expertise or if there's um, a lot of publishing um, there, I'll try to have someone who, so just to try to reflect that we have the, the right expertise to assess the application. Okay, so the last award I'm gonna to talk to you about is the Agility Award. Um, so we introduced this for the first time this year. We've already had one closing date and there's gonna be another closing date coming up. And then there's gonna be another closing date coming up after that. So um, I'm calling the Agility Award, I think it's kind of like a, a mini bursary really. It was a flexible support introduced in light of COVID-19. The next closing date is the 8th of July. Um, and what distinguishes it, um, there are two things that probably distinguish it from the bursary. Um, one is that it is open to artists and arts workers. So, um, and it's freelance arts workers. So that's an important distinction as well, but um, maybe in other art forms that makes a little bit more sense that this is open to um, actors or um, uh, stage designers or people that that um, that might not be eligible for our usual bursary are, are eligible here. In literature, it's open to literary editors, um, translators, um, anyone kind of working in the fields, fields of literature, um, but they need to be freelance. They can't be already employed by one of the organizations that we're already supporting. Um, so what you can apply for the, for the agility, you can apply for up to 5,000 euros, between 1,500 and 5,000 euros, you can apply for it. And we're open to creative development, career development supports so if you want to take a course or something like that, or your kind of regular bursary things, time, space, freedom. So the idea that you would be taking time out um, from your usual life to, um, to work on a particular project. Um, but because the scale of the, the, the money involved is, it just means you're gonna be doing a smaller piece of work. Um, so, Supporting material that you have to provide um, is, um, again, just like the others, in addition to your application form, you have to put in your CV. And then if you're gonna be working with a mentor or someone else, you need to put their CV in as well. Um, you need to put in one, between one and three examples, samples or evidence of your work. So it doesn't need to be a work in progress in this instance. It just needs to be a sample of something that you have done. So it could be something you've published already. Um, and that if there are collaborators or other people that you're working with, you need to put in letters of support from them. That might not apply to everybody, so don't worry. And then if you have a disability and you need um, additional funding for access costs, you need to apply, you need to detail those as well. That won't apply to everybody either. Um, and as I said before, you can apply for 1,500 to 5,000 euros. So we've just assessed the first round of these. Um, we had 127 in literature. And I will say the vast majority of them were for people who were looking to buy a short amount of time. Um, and so a lot like the bursary, but just for a shorter period of time. And then there were a lot of, um, a lot of requests for short courses or for support to work with a mentor over a particular period of time. A lot of it really was like, can I please just have 5,000 euro, which will enable me to take a couple months off work and just concentrate on this or pay for childcare for this period of time so that I can actually just finish this, uh, this book. So the criteria, again, are exactly the same. Artistic merit, how they meet the objectives and priorities of the award, feasibility. Now, the assessment process for this one is different. Um, it doesn't go to panel because we're aiming to get these decisions out to people much more quickly. Um, so we just take the decisions internally. So there's an initial shortlisting process by the literature advisor. And then I give a final score and uh, we record those and we take the decisions ourselves. Um, so we're just in the process of signing off on the last, uh, on the last round of them. Um, but the idea is that we're able to get through these decisions quite quickly. Um, a question people often ask is whether or not you can apply for an agility and a bursary award. You can, and you can also apply for a project award. But the thing that needs to happen is that they need to be, um, they need to be for distinct purposes. So you can't be like applying for the same thing or kind of hedging your bets in that way. So just, um, you, can, you can apply for all of them, but you just need to make sure you're applying for a distinct purpose um, for each of them. Um, so yeah. Um, and then if you don't get, if you don't get a bursary in the first round, you can apply again. If you don't get an agility award in the first round, you can apply again. You can't get two bursaries in one year. You can't get two agilities in one year. Um, but if you're unsuccessful, um, you can apply again. And when it comes to that, after your decision, so we always receive far more worthy applications and we're in a position to support. And um, while the Arts Council is in receipt of more funding from government this year than, than we have ever before, we are in receipt of far more applications than ever before. So like with, with the additional money has come a great deal of additional demand. 
Um, so it's just to kind of bear in mind that just because your application it has been um, refused in one instance doesn't mean that you should stop engaging with the Arts Council or be discouraged. Um, I worked in the Arts Council for a really long time and um, you would be surprised that the, the, the people that we have had to turn down in the past, but then might come back again and, and, and are supported. And it can be the competitive context of a particular round. It can be an element of their application that didn't quite work. It can be the, the, um, the, the, the way the panel responded to it, any number of things. But I just encourage people to just engage with us in the Arts Council. We are here to encourage artists, not discourage them. And um, so what I say to people is after your decision, please ask for your assessment. You're entitled to know um, what was said about your application. And then please don't get discouraged. Um, and my next point would be don't get discouraged. Um, my next point would be don't get discouraged. And I know that's easier said than done, but we really are here just to support you and um, always happy to talk about um, uh, maybe what went wrong and what could, what could work in, in, in future. Um, so then the people to contact, myself, um, and the, the head of literature, as I say, my colleague, Audrey Keane, um, who's the support manager in literature, and then Aoife, is, um, Aoife Monaghan is the literature officer, and where all our details are up on the website as well. And then you can go to the Arts Council's website and find all of the information that we have. And thank you. So I'm sorry that I wasn't able to do this all in person with you, but I hope that that was helpful in some way. And as I say, happy to talk through any of this with anybody at any stage. Um, and I hope, I really look forward to, to receiving um, your many exciting applications in the coming weeks. So thank you so much. <laughs>